So Stefan, please, um, the floor is yours. Thanks, Gabor. Uh, good morning, everyone, and uh, fantastic to see such a great uh, turnout here today. Uh, let me see if I can get my slides running. There's uh, Annalene's uh, contact details uh, in case you want to contact her. Uh, so I'll be talking a little bit about um, um, two things. Uh, so, so the first is a project that we are undertaking as part of the uh, Remo cost action. And the second is um, a kind of a, a survey or an initial pilot study that we undertook uh, as part of this larger project, if you will, where we actually have some uh, findings to share as well. But first, um, why am I here? Why am I in this? Um, uh, I, I think I've, I've been at the Amsterdam Business School of the University of Amsterdam since about 2006. And I've, I've come some way in um, uh, sort of realizing the importance of, of uh, uh, the, the choices that we make there where it comes to what we research. Uh, so nowadays, when I look back on my PhD in which I researched uh, expatriates and, and how to make them uh, or how to select them and make them more effective for organizations, I sort of think like, oh, how could I spend four years of my life um, on, on such a privileged and, and elite group of, of, of people where um, that there may be much more uh, meaningful things uh, to work on. And I'm, I'm sort of in this um, in part because I noticed that I've, I've normalized uh, my own experiences as an academic. Uh, so to give you an idea, uh, I was in my office on Saturday uh, on Sunday, and I wasn't even working on, on preparing this, uh, this presentation. So um, I've, I've also uh, seen many anecdotal uh, accounts or examples of, of people struggling in academia. I've seen examples of burnout, uh, suicide. Uh, and I, I, I think from, that, uh, uh, from those experiences, I, I basically have a personal commitment to see whether um, uh, we can do something about this and whether we can make things better. So um, yes, we see many academic workplaces uh, fail in, in, in supporting their, their researchers, um, but there's also differences. And, and this kind of led into this um, idea uh, of whether it may not be possible to, to sort of tease this out in a, a, a research project. Uh, so I, I, I'm also involved in a, in a group that's called the Future of uh, Work and Organizational Psychology, and this a group of work and organizational psychologists who basically came to the same realization. Uh, so here we are, supposedly with expertise on, on how to make workplaces better, how to reduce burnout, how to uh, make employees happier, and why are we studying organizations uh, other than universities. So, so why are we focusing our attention on, on commercial organizations and so forth when uh, within the, the very institutions that we work for, uh, there, there is enough uh, sort of meat <laughs> to, to uh, make for, for interesting research and, and uh, worthwhile, uh, worthwhile change, if you will. Uh, so we wrote a, a manifesto in, in which we sort of um, um, put our finger on, on many of the sore spots that we saw there where it came, for instance, to uh, performance assessment, um, but also to supervision or how we treat our doctoral students, um, uh, how we treat ourselves and so forth. So in this manifesto, we came up with a number of recommendations to that effect. And, and this uh, future work in organizational psychology movement is now uh, working on, on um, uh, driving change. Within REMO, as, as Gabor has uh, already discussed, uh, we have three working groups. Uh, so the system level, the institutional level, um, and the, the local level. Um, I um, have been fortunate to, to um, uh, be uh, uh, chairing this institutional level work group. Uh, but actually, and, and this is often the case after you write and submit a proposal and, and get it granted, you look back at the proposal and, and wonder about some of the, chain, uh, the, the, the choices that you made there. And in a way, even though these uh, work groups are, are useful for focusing our attention on these different levels, if you will, 
There, where it comes to, to taking action or conducting research, uh, we've actually come to realize that they're, they're very much interlinked, right? So um, it may be worthwhile to, to see whether we can involve uh, all levels uh, within a, a, a single uh, project. Within uh, Remo as well, we put out a manifesto. Uh, there's a QR code uh, where you can pick it up, um, where we also voiced some of the um, uh, ambitions that we had within each of these um, uh, levels. Let me see what's going on there. So um, a few more words uh, about the Remo cost action. Um, uh, within the cost action, uh, together with uh, Jana Lasser, I'm um, uh, chairing also this uh, survey special interest group, uh, which currently has uh, more than 100 active researchers trying to uh, uh, put together a multi-country, multi-level uh, um, study on the uh, contextual antecedents of research and mental health. And I'll be talking more about that um, as well. But there's a lot more going on within the Remo cost action. So we're writing national policy briefs with recommendations um, and, and the identification of best practices. We or organize uh, um, uh, conferences. Uh, so we're just back from uh, Budapest where we organized the, the second Remo conference there's uh, ambassadors being trained uh, to to implement local change uh, we have webinars a youtube channel and and so forth uh, and indeed uh, as part of this network we're also in the in the process of um, developing uh, uh, further proposals uh, so so one um, that that's on the horizon uh, or no, that, 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 that we aim to submit uh, will be focused um, on, on bringing about some sort of uh, uh, mental health uh, certification uh, for institutions um, where, where we can actually uh, measure how an institution is doing in terms of its policies and practices in, in supporting the mental health of uh, its uh, incumbent um, employees. Okay, I had a little video lined up for you. Um, I don't know if it's even worth trying, uh, um, and, but um, maybe we can share these slides at a later point because I, should I try to get it to work or? Um, okay, let me see if I, it won't work, no. No worries. Uh, so we, we can share these slides uh, later. It's a video that we produced at the first Remo uh, uh, conference. And uh, with that video, we would basically like to uh, convince um, uh, institutional uh, um, uh, gatekeepers and uh, 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 researcher associations and, and so forth uh, to come on board uh, to endorse this survey and, and furthermore to disseminate the survey um, to uh, the greater membership. So what is this survey about? Well, uh, basically, when, when Jana Losser and I first started thinking about this, and this was uh, January 2022, um, we, we said that it would be uh, great if we could put together the largest ever benchmark on uh, research and mental health in European academia. And, and we, at the time, uh, set ourselves the ambition of uh, disseminating this survey by February 1st, 2023. Um, so there's been a bit of a delay, but we, we, we've been very hard at work uh, uh, at putting this together. And, and currently um, we are uh, gearing up to disseminate the survey as of September 1st. Uh, it will be running for um, six months uh, across um, the, the 40 plus uh, Remo countries. Um, and we, obtained to, uh, we, we plan to obtain data from tens of thousands of researchers uh, spread across a whole range of institutions um, within those countries. So uh, what, what are the specific uh, objectives that we're chasing with this survey? Uh, well, well, first off, it's, it's uh, to corroborate uh, earlier evidence, uh, such as the evidence that was uh, presented by uh, Anne as to the dire state uh, or supposedly dire state of uh, mental health in, in academia. Uh, but as researchers, we would also like to generate knobs to turn, right? So, so we would like to uh, uh, gain insight into the antecedents of research on mental health and not um, the individual level antecedents, but uh, we would like to identify specific uh, contextual 
antecedents of research or mental health. And we can do the, that within this uh, particular setup um, because it's known as a, as a multi-level study. So, so we have individuals who are nested within institutions that are nested within countries. And what we'll actually be able to do once the data are in is we'll be able to um, um, partition the variability in mental health to these different levels. So we will be able to make statements such as 20% uh, of the variability in mental health resides at the individual level, 30% uh, at the institutional level, 15% at the uh, country level. And as always in, in research, there, there's a lot of error and noise as well. So, so we expect to see some of that um, as well. Next up, uh, we, we hope to gain insight um, in, uh, with this research in uh, institutional differences. So what are institutions doing? Um, and the survey indeed uh, contains a whole range of questions um, there where it comes to uh, supervision, uh, there where it comes to um, uh, precarity and, 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 and things of that nature. And uh, as, as a kind of gold level uh, uh, objective we set for ourselves uh, is to, to actually see uh, whether we can establish relationships uh, between those uh, contextual antecedents and uh, research or mental health. So the problem with uh, so-called cross-sectional uh, uh, studies in which individual informants report on their mental health and at the same time on, for instance, the quality of supervision uh, that they receive is, is that they are open to alternative explanations. Uh, so yes, you may observe a correlation between mental health and um, uh, supervision, but it, it, it could be like an alternative explanation uh, for that could be, for instance, that you're capturing differences between individuals who complain a lot about their mental health and about their supervision and people who do not complain a lot. Uh, so, so with this survey, what we are aiming to do is um, to, to actually aggregate mental health to the department level and then seeing whether average mental health at the department level can be predicted by what's going on in these institutions. And, and likewise, uh, we can aggregate scores to the country level. And then at the country level, we can um, uh, see how country differences in, for instance, investment in, in research or cultural differences um, uh, drive the mental health of the people that, like the average mental health of the people that reside uh, within those countries. So that's kind of a, a unique uh, feature of uh, this uh, research project. And here uh, is, is basically a diagram that, that um, shows that uh, idea in, in a bit more detail. So we, we have individuals who are nested within faculties that are nested within universities that are nested uh, within countries. And as always in research, um, the, these ideas are all very good and well, uh, but we've come to realize that we uh, cannot actually uh, assess each and every level um, that we uh, were originally after. Uh, so originally we were sort of fantasizing about getting data from people within departments and then having an identifiable supervisor and, and so forth, uh, but due to privacy uh, uh, legislation and, 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 and so forth, we, we've had to drop that idea. Uh, so we are now using uh, uh, people's discipline uh, as a proxy for the department that they are working in, uh, so that if a bunch of people um, uh, who are working at a particular university say that they are working organizational psychologists, we are assuming that they are working together in the same department, rather than asking them directly, which department are you working at? Um, because we don't have that list. Um, and also because of privacy concerns and, and the, the ability that we may ha then have to, to re-identify uh, people. The survey is complex and it's, it's ambitious. Uh, so uh, health data are amongst the most sensitive data that you uh, uh, can collect and, and clearly uh, we are doing everything in our power to, to ensure that we uh, comply not only with uh, GDPR, uh, but also with ethical principles uh, pertaining to the collection of these types of data. Um, and that has uh, um, made it an, uh, an interesting but, but complex uh, endeavor to, uh, to set up. So um, when Jan and I uh, first started thinking about this, uh, 
we said, well, it's not just the two of us who are going to be uh, uh, setting up and carrying out this survey. Clearly, we need help. And we thought that we would put out um, uh, a little vacancy announcement uh, through the REMO uh, cost action channels. And um, so, so we, we came up with uh, uh, the, this vacancy. We said we want to put out this survey and we want people to commit eight hours per month of their time in the next year uh, to helping us put this together. And we thought, well, are we over asking by, by, uh, by doing that? Um, and and um, when we sent it out, we looked at each other and we said, well, maybe we'll get four or five uh, responses. And um, we were very pleasantly surprised that from the network, about 60 people uh, um, um, stood up and said, yes, uh, I want to contribute uh, to this project and, and to this endeavor. Uh, so um, as of that time, we've, we've basically been, been leading a, a, a multinational enterprise of, of uh, volunteers and, and we've, we've decided uh, we needed to organize ourselves. Uh, so what we did is, is we split the work in a number of um, uh, work packages, uh, so Jana and myself are uh, uh, basically in charge of uh, project management. Uh, Ivana Petrovic and, and uh, Mais Alunaidi are, are, um, uh, were involved in hypothesis generation. So they, uh, together with the people in their work package, scoured the extant uh, uh, research literature on mental health in academia in an effort to identify all sorts of uh, potent predictors of, of mental health. Now, that led to... a very long list of, of potential antecedents that we could include in the survey. And um, given that we wanted to uh, constrain the survey to about 15 minutes in length, uh, we decided um, uh, to, to ask um, uh, Inge and Igor uh, to, to shorten this down into a set of, of measures that we could uh, incorporate. And, and that was quite uh, uh, challenging because it involved uh, basically deciding between different uh, antecedents that were all deemed worthwhile of, of study. Um, and and uh, yeah, we had to bring it down to, to something uh, short and, and meaningful. Uh, Inge and Matthias here, here present are, are charged with the uh, dissemination work package. Uh, so, so currently this is, this is highly uh, salient because we, we've arrived at the stage where the survey is basically ready. And we are now thinking about how to distribute uh, the survey invitation through any means possible, basically. So, so we're, um, uh, we, we've put in place a team of some uh, uh, 40 country coordinators um, that are in charge of local dissemination to the universities within those countries, uh, but we'll also be chasing up uh, uh, professional organizations of researchers. Um, we have links with uh, Elsevier who've, who've uh, indicated that they would be interested in disseminating our survey across uh, its uh, social media channels and, and so forth. Um, so um, the proof of the, uh, the, the proof of the Pudding is in the eating, right? Um, so uh, it, it remains to be seen whether we succeed in our ambitions, uh, but this is uh, uh, exciting. And, and yes, we're coming to the point where uh, data will soon be uh, pouring in, hopefully. Um, oh. Yeah, um, we also felt that uh, we had uh, some sort of uh, responsibility um, uh, to our respondents. Uh, so as part of taking the survey, people may actually become aware of mental health issues that they didn't know that they had. Uh, so in an effort to sort of give back, uh, we want to end the survey with a page where uh, people will, will be guided to, um, to different resources and, and help that they can um, uh, get in so far as they uh, feel a need for that. And then finally, uh, Ming Ming Chu and Sophia Pai are um, uh, charged with the uh, analyses and, and crunching of these data, um, uh, which is going to be uh, quite a complex uh, endeavor as well. So where do we stand? Uh, well, we've developed our hypotheses. Um, we also have um, an, an authorship and data access policy. 
so given that we're sort of a semi-permeable organization uh, that anyone can join, uh, we decided that we should also come up with some regulations as to how to manage uh, people's authorship on the manuscripts that we hope will come out of this research. Um, we've put in place uh, all sorts of uh, um, uh, ethics uh, um, uh, approvals, uh, data collection and storage infrastructure, um, and uh, we've refined the survey, translated into uh, the five um, uh, most spoken languages uh, uh, across the Remo membership. And currently we're in the process of pre-registering this study and uh, preparing for survey dissemination. So we hope to collect data between September, 2023 and March, uh, 2024, uh, depending on, on how we fare in, uh, in actually uh, meeting our um, uh, ambitions. So that's one project uh, that, that uh, will soon be launched and, and uh, we hope to, to be back uh, with um, the, the actual results and, and outcomes. Uh, but I thought I'd also tell you a little bit about a, a pilot study we conducted as, as part of this larger uh, uh, effort. And um, uh, so, so about a year ago, uh, Sabina Osmanovic, uh, who's based in Montenegro, uh, came to see me and she said, um, I want to carry out a survey in Montenegro. And I said, well, that's great uh, because we're putting together a survey. And if you wait uh, for a couple of months, we'll be able to uh, uh, disseminate it in um, Montenegro as well. And she said, no, no, I, I want to carry out a survey, but I want to do it now. And uh, we said, well, okay, um, so why don't we then uh, use this survey as kind of a pilot um, uh, to gain some experience with the kinds of issues that we may run into uh, in disseminating the larger um, uh, survey. So we decided to focus this uh, particular survey on um, uh, job demands and, and conditional job security. Uh, so many academics are in precarious uh, uh, contracts. And we were interested in examining uh, to what extent job demands and, and precarity are related uh, to research, research and mental health in uh, uh, Montenegro. And what's interesting about the Montenegrin uh, context is that they have a quite regimented uh, uh, tenure and promotions uh, policy within their university um, uh, universities. It's actually laid down in law and it's, it's quite clear what people must do uh, to, to be promoted. Um, and that, that um, led us to, to the following uh, model uh, where, where basically we, we said that um, um, the, the people's fulfillment of their different job obligations that they have would be related to, to mental health. So if, if you feel that you're not quite cutting it in terms of the number of publications that you are putting out or in, in the, the, the quality of your teaching, um, that will induce stress uh, or, or so was our, our idea. And um, so that's kind of a health impairment process, but uh, there's also a motivational process where um, the fulfillment of these different job obligations uh, was thought to be related to uh, engagement. So, so insofar as yes, you, you're, you're on top of your publications and your teaching and your admin, um, that will lead you to be more motivated, uh, so we thought. And both these uh, mediators, so the variables in the middle of this model, were then subsequently thought uh, to relate to uh, symptoms of depression and, and general psychological uh, well-being. So this was kind of our, our general model. And just to complicate things a little bit more, uh, uh, we, we thought we would introduce a moderator, uh, which is time to promotion. Uh, so, so basically we said, the fulfillment of research obligations will relate to uh, these uh, health-related outcomes, but more so the less time you have remaining until your uh, tenure and promotions uh, uh, talk. Um, so we uh, collected some data uh, across three universities in Montenegro with a total of about 700 academic staff. Um, we had the survey available in, in two languages. It was uh, distributed via email uh, through the IT departments of these universities. And in the end, uh, we had 147 uh, people who actually uh, completed the survey. Um, we had people from all uh, ranges of, of the academic hierarchy, uh, ranging from uh, full professors to uh, MSc students, uh, teaching assistants, and, and so forth. And um, uh, unfortunately, um, and this is a lesson for the larger survey as well, uh, where one university promised that they would be happy to take part 
uh, in the survey, when push came to shove, they said, uh, uh, oh no, uh, we're, we're not part of this, we're not doing this. Uh, so um, that's, that's something we're also taking forward to uh, the larger survey. So here are the, the results. Uh, basically the, the model panned out, okay? It was actually our expectation that due to the salience of research, uh, research should be the strongest driver of these mental health uh, outcomes or fulfillment of research obligations, I should say. Um, but actually it, it turned out that both research and teaching um, had uh, um, uh, relationships with uh, work-related stress. Um, and uh, administrative, um, uh, yeah, uh, so, so the fulfillment of administration, uh, strangely enough, was negatively related to stress. Uh, and, and this is a finding that we were struggling with uh, for quite a bit. Uh, so, so here it is, the, the idea that, that people who have fulfilled their administrative obligations report greater stress uh, than people who haven't. Uh, so that that was quite uh, puzzling, but I'll, I'll I'll get back to that. Um, uh, oh, yeah. uh, well, actually, so so one explanation that we came up with is that maybe if you become really good at admin, you will be recognized as such by other people in the department, who will then pour more administrative tasks uh, on on top of you. Um, but actually, this morning I was thinking about it a bit more, and uh, it may also have to do with uh, identity. Um, so I think very few people, if any, get into academia to perform administrative tasks, uh, right? So if you are fulfilling a lot of administrative tasks, this may be making you wonder, like, why, why am I doing this? Or what, what am I here for if, if all I'm doing is admin? Right, uh, so so that might explain this this uh, surprising um, uh, negative relationship. And uh, yes, we we did actually find that it gets worse um, the less time to promotion uh, uh, remains. Okay, so so some conclusions then. Um, uh, well, we need evidence um, not only uh, as to the poor state of mental health in in doctoral education, but but also what we can actually do about it, right? And there we should be uh, careful not to blame the individual. Um, so so uh, we we should try to identify uh, country, institution, department, departmental, and individual level antecedents of of mental health, um, and. Uh, once we know that, we can actually uh, uh, try to change uh, the institutions uh, from within. Um, I, uh, I'm not super optimistic that that process will, will go very quickly. Uh, so uh, I think there is also a strong case for, for doctoral education, uh, for, for making sure uh, that people know what they're getting into, uh, for, for making people resilient and, and, and so forth as we wait for uh, our institutions to uh, become healthier workplaces. And yes, I, I also think um, there, there is a case to be made for, for a stronger focus on uh, professional identity. And, and so what people are actually getting into academia for in, in the first place. And there's an interesting, uh, so I think at the University of Amsterdam about if I'm not mistaken, about 80% of uh, uh, PhD students have left academia within uh, two years of um, their uh, graduation. And I, I think when you look at why people are getting into academia, probably about 80% of them want to be a professor. Uh, so, so somewhere in that process, that people are being disappointed or, or people, uh, um, yeah, people's dreams are, are being shattered, if you will. And so, so I think th there's work to be done in, in, in giving people a realistic uh, a preview as to uh, career tracks in academia and um, um, uh, yeah, how realistic it is to, to expect to become a professor and, and so forth. And um, yeah, we, we may actually also need to not recruit as many PhD students because maybe we, we simply have uh, too many, but those are just, uh, just some concluding uh, uh, thoughts. So what are some implications uh, for the advancement of doctoral education? Well, I think the, um, the REMO survey will create benchmarks against which uh, we, we can run interventions and, and, and try to um, uh, 
uh, improve things. Uh, we will also identify uh, where the, the, the problems lie uh, so, so, uh, insofar, and we actually expect to find strong effects of, of supervision, for instance, um, then we can also target our education uh, and, and make sure that, that doctoral candidates know how to uh, manage their, their supervisor, if you will. Um, we also need to, uh, 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 or we can use the outcomes of the REMO, REMO survey to, to raise institutional uh, awareness and therewith uh, also gain greater access for running these types of uh, interventions. Um, and finally, I expect the survey to uh, yield insights into um, uh, subgroups, uh, also among doctoral students who are particularly at risk. Uh, so I suspect, for instance, that, that many uh, um, immigrant uh, doctoral students uh, who have their visa on the line and work visa and, and so forth, uh, maybe in a, in a much worse place um, than uh, um, than locals, if you will. So, so um, the survey will be able to to give us some insight into the the subgroups that may be uh, uh, particularly at risk of developing uh, mental health issues, and then hopefully we can go in and uh, target our interventions. So as said, uh, the REMO project and, and the survey project uh, is, is open. Uh, anyone can join and, and basically we need all the help we can get. So insofar as you are interested in getting involved, please drop me a line. I'm getting quite a few of these emails. Uh, so, so it may take a, a, a number of days or uh, even a, a week or so before I get back to you, but um, uh, I will, I, I promise. Uh, so. Um, uh, with that, uh, I think uh, I'll hand the microphone back to Gabor. Thank you.